Hi, this is Chris Monk at Highland Guitars, and you're watching episode 46 of From the Luthier's Workbench. In this episode, and probably the next couple of episodes, I'm going to focus on explaining the process that I go through to design one of my guitars. The reason I'm doing this is I haven't really seen very many uh, uh, YouTube tutorials that explain this part of the process or why it's so important. So I hope to uh, give you a pretty clear view of what I go through before I ever turn on a bandsaw or a planer or even my CNC machine. So let's get started. An electric guitar consists of a body, the neck, the fretboard, fret wire, nut, tuners, pickups, the bridge, the electronics. It's pretty simple really and it would it would seem as though you could just throw all this stuff together and you'd have a great working guitar. However, you have to make some decisions about the design early on before you do any cutting in order to make sure that the guitar is going to work properly. You have to know the width of your fretboard, the scale length. You have to know how deep the neck is going to sit into the body, how high up off the body the bridge is going to sit, and you need to make sure that all these are going to play well together otherwise you're going to run into problems. It's not a simple matter of looking at a picture of a Stratocaster, cutting out the shape from, from wood and then uh, throwing it all together and having a, a perfectly functioning guitar. If you fail to take into account any of these critical dimensions, the guitar just isn't going to function properly. And that's why I go through a design process before I get to, to the point where I'm cutting the wood. I like to resolve these questions that I have before I start cutting the wood because I don't like to waste wood and I don't want to run into a situation where I haven't considered a critical design issue and as a result I've wound up with something that isn't going to work. Well it all starts with um, the concept. The concept for a guitar design comes from um, inspiration and inspiration can come from anywhere. If you open your mind you can start to see all kinds of things in the course of your daily life that can inspire you uh, in terms of your guitar design. It could be certain shapes, it can be color combinations, um, you may see wood grain in a fence that you think wow that would make a great guitar top. You just don't want to limit yourself. Uh, I use the internet and search for photos of guitars, uh, the latest ideas and the latest designs. I also collect books on guitars and it's surprising how many books there are out there that are just crammed with photos of guitars. Uh, this is you know the three that I you know have right here in front of me but I've got a whole bookshelf upstairs filled with uh, different guitar designs. And I'll look through, and I'm not necessarily looking to copy what somebody else has done, but a lot of times I'll see a design and it will spark an idea, and I'll think, oh, I want to apply that. I also uh, will look at or will consider uh, different body shapes, color combinations, wood combinations, uh, maybe different pickup combinations, uh, different types of bridges. Uh, maybe I'll come up with some ideas for some unique and creative wiring scenarios. All these ideas will just start floating around in my head. And when I get to a point where it's time to start really uh, nailing down a design, I try to approach it uh, from two different perspectives, form and function. And you've heard the phrase form and function before. Well, it really applies to guitars. Uh, you've got the form, which is the shape, the color, um, and the basic design, the headstock design, that sort of thing. And then you have function, and that is the guitar's ability to perform as one would expect it to. And in order to bring form and function together, I start by sitting down at my computer and doing a full-size drawing. When I design a guitar that I'm going to build, I do it on my computer. I'm using an Apple iMac. This is a 27-inch iMac. And the program that I do my initial drawing work in is Adobe Illustrator. Now, Adobe Illustrator is a vector-based program. And the reason I like to use it is because I've been using it since the first version came out some 
25, 30 years ago. So I'm very comfortable with it. Now I know a lot of you will probably wonder why don't I use a CAD program, computer aided design? Well, I do, but only under certain circumstances. If I have a customer that wants a plan that they're gonna build themselves, obviously I have to add dimensions to that, which I can't do without a plugin on Adobe Illustrator. And I've tried it and I don't think it works that well. So what I do is I do the drawing in Adobe Illustrator then I import it into the CAD program, apply the dimensions, and then send that on to the customer. But when I'm going to build the guitar myself, I don't really need them. So I just stick with Illustrator. And Illustrator has all the accuracy necessary for uh, designing a guitar at full scale. Uh, I think it's accurate down to like a thousandth of an inch or even more. Uh, and that's what you want in a vector program. You don't have to use Illustrator, but... Um, I use it because I, I'm comfortable with it and I've always used it. So you can explore different vector-based programs. Just make sure that they can do a full-size guitar at full scale. And what I do is I will do a drawing, an initial drawing, in Illustrator of the guitar full-size top view and side view. And the reason for the initial drawing, or at least um, the main goal of the initial drawing, is to make sure that all my ideas, all the different elements, are going to work well together. Because I don't want to go out to the shop and start cutting wood, only to, to discover that uh, one of my ideas isn't going to play well with the other ones. Doing the drawing on the computer allows me to hash out all those potential problems before they actually become a problem. So let's jump into Adobe Illustrator and I'll give you just a basic idea of how I do this. I'm not going to, it's not going to be a tutorial that explains it in excruciating detail because it would take too long to do that, but I just want to kind of give you an idea of what I do and what my uh, uh, philosophy and approach is. So, and as you can see, I've got a top view up here and then I have a side view, I've got a fretboard, then I have a top view of the neck, a side view of the neck, and then I've got a couple of side views of just the body, which show pickup cavity depths, neck pocket depth, uh, control cavity depth, that sort of thing. I even have over here, this is the control cavity cover and then I have a top view of just the body, which I use to plan out the position of um, all the different uh, routing tunnels for wiring and that sort of thing. Um, the position of the neck mounting bolts, uh, bridge layout, that sort of thing. So once I get to this, pos this point, uh, I'm ready to take it to the next step. But how do I get to this point? The first thing I need to do is I need to draw the fretboard to scale. Everything is going to be based off the fretboard. And one of the tools that I like to use is an online tool called FretFine 2D. This is uh, a really handy website which allows you to design your own fretboard at actual scale. And in this case, I'm doing a multi-scale neck. Uh, one scale is 25 and a half inches, the other scale is 28 inches. Um, I can decide where the perpendicular fret is, and um, you can follow a chart down here. If you want to make a different fret perpendicular, you just input the number, corresponding number, and that will salt take care of that for you. Then um, the string width at the nut, the string width at the bridge, the amount of overhang, uh, this is just a calculation method that's not something you really have to worry about. Number of frets, which I put 25, but that's only because I want to put the end of the fretboard as the 25th fret. And the number of strings. And then once I've got that all figured out, I can save it as a, a single page PDF file to my computer. Then I open that file and it looks something like this. So I can take this element and then I would drop it into a blank 48-inch uh, wide, 36-inch high document, rotate it, and that becomes uh, just this fretboard here. From there, I can start to design the shape of the body, the headstock, and then I can start to position the bridges, the pickups, the controls. 
And by doing this drawing like this, I'm able to see it visually, and then if I uh, run into potential problems, I can solve those problems before I actually start cutting any wood. So I'll do the top view first, and from that I'm able to determine the position of my tuners and the bridge mainly. And what I'm most concerned about at this stage is to make sure that the strings aren't going to fall off the edge of the fretboard. Then I can do a side view. And with the side view, what that allows me to do is to determine the relationship between the bridge and the fretboard and the frets. And what's important for me to be aware of at this stage is that the bridge is going to allow maximum range of adjustability. So I want to go from the string touching the tops of the frets to the strings being uh, too high to be playable. So that way I have a full range of adjustment between that to achieve the uh, string action that I desire or you know whoever's going to be playing the guitar. It also allows me to solve problems that might occur where if I can't get the proper string actions, let's say for example I'm using a tunematic bridge that sits up higher uh, or so high off the body that I can't use a flat neck, I can then um, determine exactly what angle I need to make that neck to achieve uh, the best string action possible so that I can kind of play around with adjusting the angle to get it, you know, where I think it's going to be uh, the most useful to get proper string action. So as you can see, doing the drawing at 100% on the computer helps you to solve these questions before you run into them during the building process. You know, I can also um, determine the depth of my pickup pockets, the depth of my control cavity, uh, all those kind of basic decisions. And then I like to do a drawing of just the body itself that shows all the different cavities, all the different uh, holes that are going to be drilled, uh, tunnels, everything. And even my um, comfort contours, if those are going to be there, just to make sure that everything is going to fit together properly. Once I'm at this stage and I'm happy and content that everything is going to work, then I can move on to the next step, which is to do drawings that will be used to um, create files for the CNC process. And that's what I'm going to talk about in episode 47 of From the Luthier's Workbench. So stay tuned uh, for the next episode, and you'll see how I take this to the next step.